Hi, this is Brendan Glockin. This is the eighth week of my course. Today we'll be covering uh, the 20th to 22nd of um, April. Just to preface this with um, that I was on a two-week holiday between uh, the 4th and the 17th. Uh, that's why there's no kind of videos for those two weeks. I'm just going to recap what I've done in the half term, or the Easter breaks it's called. Um, I always just use Easter break as a point um, of relaxing and kind of to take a break because now I'm kind of getting into the big parts of the FMP, and that's filming, experimentation, and actually making the film. So I thought I'd take a break. Um, I did do some small stuff. Um, I visited London again, um, mostly for personal um, reasons. But um, whilst I was there, as I talked about in my kind of website, in I think context and things like that, is um, London, especially Soho, as a big influence on the film. So I thought I'd go there again to kind of uh, get an influence on the film, kind of work out the film, uh, and you know, look at the area. And also, I rewatched the films that are uh, the influencing um, this. Uh, the rewatched films that I talked about in research that influence it. So um, we've got uh, Tick Tick Boom, Baby Driver, Scott Pilgrim. Um, I watched a lot of Wes Anderson films that influenced some big Wes Anderson sequels and stuff like that to kind of better understand the film. So I kind of use it as a kind of light kind of research that's kind of getting my head in the game ready for filming. Another thing that I've done was I cleaned up my website. Uh, it's mostly just spelling, um, highlighting words. Um, I'm trying to think of an example of this. So, you know, like highlighting uh, quotes in red, uh, things like that, just kind of cleaning it up, making it look a bit better. Um, if any videos didn't have any thumbnails, I would add thumbnails to them just to make them look better, uh, things like that. Um, so this week was experimentation week. Uh, this is where we done the experimentation. I think I talked about this last week. Uh, we experimented with the practical techniques. So before I've done the playing techniques, the storyboarding previous. So that this week I was experimenting with um, the, the uh, practical techniques. So instead of doing my normal schedule of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, that I don't think will really work for this kind of thing, um, what I'm going to do is I'm talking about overall with a specific um, focus on problem solving, so overall problem solving, and then I'll break down each one because I kind of worked on them over different days. I worked on across the days and stuff like that. It's very kind of complicated. Um, to kind of get into the first, uh, and this is probably the biggest problem solving, is that um, I actually found that um, during the research report, I was way back in research, I forgot to um, do one of the practical techniques. Um, so I done. I read it as three, uh, two, because last year we've done two, this year we meant to do three. So it's kind of one of those things where um, I just didn't have it and I need to have three. So what i done was I kind of last minute kind of looked at my film, looked at my planning, and looked at what I was trying to make and worked out on the best technique that could help my film. And the one that I came up with was this kinetic typography. Uh, kinetic typography is this animation technique um, that allows you basically, in basic terms, right across the screen. Um, this would be used in a heat sequence, much like the VFX for the Spruce Sky sequence. This would be used in the Are You Happy um, ending sequence. So I wanted to have the words right out like that, but I didn't really know how to do it. So I basically done some research with the two main techniques. Uh, this was Premiere. This would be a standardized method um, that I would use to kind of write out like that. And After Effects, uh, another pro um, that also allows animation and is um, obviously going to be used for the VFX shots for the Mr. Blue Sky sequence. So this is sample of problem, uh, a problem, and then the solution being that I looked into the different unit, uh, the, uh, different techniques. Um, the second problem I had was that I didn't have really that long to do it. Um, so due to college facts and all that film, I didn't actually have long to do experimentation. So what I done was a bulk filming. Um, so basically, because I knew what techniques I'll be doing because I already researched into them. Um, and the kind of three main things, if I'll show you a video, basically the video would be made up of um, three things I'd have to do. I'd have to film an intro, this would be about explaining what I'm doing, explaining each of the things and why I'm doing it. Then I'd actually have to do the thing, and then I would have to do a conclusion where I go the pros and cons of each one. The thing is, is that the other two factors are really not like you do the one, the first one on its own. So I'd done all three intros for my film and then I'd done the um, experimentation for each one. So instead of doing one video, one video, video, one video that would take longer, I'd done this method that was much quicker. Um, so it saved me a lot of time. So that's problem kind of facing is not 
being able to like looking at it and being like, I don't know if I want to do it, the solution being kind of defining my time. I think it's something that I find definitely brutal. I think I've talked about this a lot in my reflective blogs, but I really want to work on my time management. And this is me trying to really look at look at the whole thing instead of looking at each part and going, how can I do this? Um, one of the um, small problems I had was the original post cons for two of the sections were corrupted. Um, so to give you specific sections that these were um, on, it was the um, kinetic typography and the VFX limitation. Basically what happened was footage for some reason just corrupted. Um, that meant that the footage didn't actually um, record or something like that. Something just bugs happen with a few, I think. So what I'd done was I re-recorded it, but um, if you can see from this video, I'm holding my phone. This is actually as a backup option. So I would have the camera rolling with it recording me, and then I would have basically holding my phone with a voice memo so it recorded the audio. So the idea was that if the footage cropped again, um, I would have a backup with the audio and just put on the audio and just put the images above it. And also, um, this actually helped later on because it means it made clean, a cleaner audio for these videos. So it kind of works in both kind of thing. So I think I'm doing this again if I ever have to kind of film in a classroom. So I'd usually use my camera that has a road video microphone, but at the time due to time management and stuff like that, I don't have um, access to a road video camera or really clean way to clean audio. So I decided to do it this way. And also this meant that like I had a backup. So to with the files on the um, camera club that I still had the voice at my most. So that's another example of kind of problem solving, um, seeing a problem and then just kind of working with it. So let's get into the first video and that was kinetic typography. Um, okay, so to kinetic typography. Uh, all right, so the first experimentation I looked into was kinetic typography. Um, I briefly talked about this in um, the beginning because uh, kinetic typography was the one that I kind of had to uh, redo quickly into the research um, just because I forgot there was three techniques or two and um, I talked about in problem solving. And one of the things problems I had was I couldn't really work out the um, how to do it inside of After Effects um, and Premiere. I think After Effects was a bigger kind of problem just because After Effects is a newer program that I haven't used before. Premiere I kind of got because I knew how to do keyframe but it was still difficult. The kind of solution I came up for this was actually just looking back on my previous videos um my research sorry and basically re-watching the videos and taking kind of step by step instead of watching it overall to work out the loop parts and once i understand the basic kind of groundwork of how do you do it in after effects it really helped me best to understand it so there was kind of um problem was i couldn't work out the effects and the solution was just kind of looking at tutorials looking at videos just kind of messing around with the program also helped me um, I think I spent about solid about 30 minutes just messing around the program. That really helps you kind of better understand it because it's better to get hands on experience. Um, the biggest problem I had with After Effects, and this came across both in the kinetic typography section and in the VFX section, was that um, After Effects is a bit weird how it uses footage. Um, so Premiere, you can download an MP4. An MP4 can be uploaded to YouTube, blah, 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 website, fine. Um, After Effects, when you use it, it can only be downloaded um, two, it can be downloaded basically two ways. You can export to a mirror or download it as a certain file type. I forgot the exact name of the file type. The first option downloading to a mirror, I would usually use on the uh, home reviewers. Um, so I could just plug it into a mirror and premiere edit it and stuff like that. The problem with the college computers and After Effects is a bit weird and it's kind of like this bug with the college computers or After Effects or something like that. Um, I'll show it in this video. It's in this video. So basically what happened was the project of Minnesota Nouveau blah, 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 and it can be opened. Um, basically, After Effects is After Effects, when it converts to Premiere, um, it thinks that Premiere is an older version, a newer version that the college computers don't have. So when Premiere tries to open that, it freaks out because it doesn't have that version. So you actually can't do it that way. And then the other way wouldn't, the other way of um, converting it wouldn't work because basically um, I found that the file size that I had was way too big due to the effects on it to use any kind of free MP4 converter that I would usually use to basically convert it to MP4 files so I could plonk it into Premiere and edit it into the videos. This is quite an issue because I need to show off all the videos. 
I did think about the kind of thought problems, I think how I how I do it. One was just directly just showing from my phone. But a solution I actually found about is um, using YouTube as a converter. So YouTube, you upload, you can upload any file type, like, including the one that um, After Effects converts into. But when you download a YouTube clip, you can also do it always downloads as MP4. So I uploaded it as uh, let's say dot and then I downloaded it and it came out as MP4. So basically it kind of it um basically converted for me the file type. So that's um, another sort of problem solving is that I saw a problem where I couldn't really work around it. Instead of cheapening out, doing my phone or something stupid like that, I used YouTube and for uh, create a solution around it. So uh, that was the kinetic typography. Overall, I think the kinetic typography was a pretty decent section. Um, as you can see from the video, so as you can see, it's an interesting effect. Um, I think it does work really well. And as I talked about in this video, I won't kind of blather on and repeat myself. After Effects is a really effective program in doing this. You can see that looks very clean. But as I found with um, my video is that this certain section is all about timing. And due to the amount of effects that would be on it, and like the amount of text and stuff like that, I thought for me it would be best. So I think it's a good example of me kind of looking at both creative and the business side, making a very kind of decision that best suited it, you know. I, I looked at both options, I looked at pros and cons. Um, as you can see, I looked at pros and cons, kind of really understood it better, and then kind of come to a conclusion at the end. So overall, I think the connected typography uh, section went really well. I think it was a solid section, given that I had to kind of rush it a bit last minute, just because I forgot about, um, forgot about it. I think it went really well. So let's get into the next experimentation method. And this was when I looked at VFX. Okay, um, second experimentation I looked at uh, method was a VFX. Um, just to give you some context, the VFX was made basically for the um, opening sequence. You might know this is the Mr. Blue Square sequence. I've been mean, talking about this one of the big sequence of the movie. Um, the idea was that, as you can see from this video, is to create basically sound waves uh, in the video that would kind of visually represent sound waves. Um, much like the kinetic typography section just used by Premiere and After Effects. And one of the problems I had with After Effects was it's difficult to type to music. Um, After Effects isn't an audio based program, it's a visual effects program, therefore you cannot hear audio on it for the side of the clip. Whereas Premiere, being an audio, mostly an audio kind of video based program, it, you can hear the music. This kind of problem because uh, the sound waves can be meant to be timed to the music. So they're meant to go dun, down, way, dun, down, you know, get what I mean. So basically, the solution I came up with this was um, I edited, I already had the edited in Premiere to do the Premiere method of the sound waves. But basically, I just re I had that playing at the same time, I played the After Effects, and I went frame by frame, and I worked out the time it better. So um, there's a thing of like a problem of After Effects, different sound, sound uh, time of sound. Instead of just giving up, not timing the sound, I worked out how to time the sound. And I'm actually am going with After Effects for the main technique, and I'll be using this technique. Um, using this idea of using kind of a mirror to better time it side by side to make sure it's all timed. On the other side, Premiere, um, I couldn't work out the right shapes for the sound waves just because Premiere is limiting in how much you can kind of do uh, with shapes and stuff like that. And the solution I came up with was a bit of a kind of um, tiny bit overcomplicated, but basically, I talked about this in my video. But basically, I made the shape in Photoshop. Um, I say to show as I um, PNG, this meant that you could kind of move it around and change it so that bend it. And then basically I just added it into the mirror folder, as you can see, and overlapped them by creating this kind of effect where it kind of it creates that sound wave effect. Um, we're just, these are just literally PNGs, the same image sound waves with the opacity low, lower down the greater. So there's another thing of looking at the program and the kind of better understanding how to use it and like how to use different programs together to create that effect. And then the third issue I have is After Effects is a new program. Um, I don't use After Effects used before. I think I don't used it way back in year one in Project 2 for the Forest, where I had one scene that I used it for 10 seconds to create an After Effect, and that's the only time I ever used After Effects. So it's a new program. 
It's difficult to understand. This kind of goes for both the interview effects and the connected type of view section. It is a very annoying program to use. And the kind of solution I came up with, uh, came up with this is um, re-watching the videos in my research, especially the kind of bulkier, these kind of hour, this uh, video was really helpful. It's three hour long, one that really went into um, after effects or like, you know, all these videos that really kind of helped me better understand it. And I kind of took my time with it. I think the biggest thing you, uh, the biggest thing that helped me personally was getting hands on experience, just kind of messing around with it, playing around with it. Um, I swear a lot of my lunch breaks when I was playing around with it, it's really just better understanding it. So let's get into the third and final technique, and this was working in audio effects to give us audacity and audition. Okay, the third experimentation was looking into um, audio effects. Um, as talked about a lot in my work, especially in the script plays, um, one of the characters is um, called The Voice, and the idea of The Voice is it's this kind of a looming presence that's kind of just big kind of voice-based character. And um, I wanted to use audition and art effects, oh, no, sorry, audition and audacity to basically boom up this voice and stuff like that. So I looked into both these programs, uh, I'd done this in the research, and now I actually kind of messed around with them. And um, this is probably the most challenging uh, experimentation, because the last experimentation I always had made a fallback on, because there's a program I've used quite a lot, I use Reddit or uh, edit all my effects shots and create all the time, things like that. And even After Effects, I kind of understood, but Audacity and Audition were two brand new programs that I've never used before. So it was a challenging one. I think this was the longest one, amount of time that I spent on it. I'll on be honest, it, the uh, final outcome could have been better. Um, so I did have a little bit of problem solving. One of the biggest problem solvings I had was basically, um, I didn't have a lot of time to get this done. Um, just because the other ones took a bit longer. Wednesday was basically just taken up by entirety by just rewriting that post of research report. So I had to do it a lot at home. And the, problem, the biggest problem I had was, one, I don't have a Dusty, I don't have Dusty at home, and I don't have a Dish at home. These are two kind of problems I had where I need to program so I don't have them. So Audacity is a free package, so luckily I was able to download it for free. Um, so that was an easy problem to solve. Um, addition, turned a bit more complicated. Audition is part of the Adobe pack. Um, so basically, I just have to look for the Adobe pack that I can show here, or Adobe Creative Suite. That unluckily, we have access to via the college network, um, much like because it's on Fear, Photoshop, things like that. I had to download it and deal with the quirks and problems of downloading. So there's another problem of not just giving up and going, oh, I'll do it next week while I'm in college. It's understanding I need to get it done by this deadline. I really like to set myself deadlines. Um, uh, I always tell myself the deadline to Monday. So as I'm feeling this to Sunday, it's always, you know, for me, I always set my deadlines to Monday, try and get it all done. So that's a good example of me kind of setting myself deadlines and understanding them. Another problem I had was due to the time notes, I actually didn't have, have time to film at home. So you might notice in my two other experimentations, the intros are shot at home, but the, out, uh, the, the bulk of the film is shot in the classroom. Um, due to me just kind of not having time, just because I didn't get the audio effects done that in time, I had to shoot at home. Um, so that's why it goes from this to this angle where I kind of show it off a bit more. And this is another example of problem solving. Instead of just giving up or something like that, I shot at home. And it's allowed me to show more of the, of the program and stuff like that. Mm. So problem three was didn't have enough time to film it and then film at home. Um, problem four and five are very similar and I was buying the bulk them together. Well, addition and Dassey are new programs. I have never used Audition or Dacity again before, um, before, and they are audio-based programs. Um, I know how to use a video editing program because very similar Photoshop, very similar. These are two, these are massive new areas I've never used before. And that's what I want to do. I really want to challenge myself. And they are very difficult programs to use. Audition especially is a unique program. Um, it's just because it's very complicated. Audacity is kind of a bit easier, but as I talked about in my um, experimentation, Due to that being a bit easy, it's a bit limiting on what you can do. So, um, and the basic solution I came up for this was basically I looked at previous tutorials that I'd done during my research. I rewatched the videos, stuff like that, and I kind of just messed around with the programs. I think that's the best way I personally learned how to use this program. It's just kind of messing around with them, and it's kind of playing around with them, seeing what I can do, and um, 
Uh, especially for these, I looked at um, different videos. I kind of just messed around with him, but I really worked out how does the program work and will it work for what I want to do. And then finally, um, I couldn't work out how to what it sounds like for. So I wanted the original voice when he says stop in the original bit, as I talk about the planning, to really kind of boom. Um, I think in my video, I uh, one influence I talk about is um, Conchu from Moonlight. Uh, I really like his presence and I really wanted to just be a hit the audience. So um, I looked at demonic sounds, I looked at tutorials, and I looked at tutorials on how to do demonic sound in both Audition and Audacity. And it just really helped me. Um, really work out demonic sound, really work out how to kind of mix in those demonic features, how to really kind of make a booming voice. So that's another problem we have is before we can work out demonic sound, looking for a solution, looking at different tutorials, putting together the methods of kind of creating my own demonic sound. Um, overall, um, as you can see, all the problems. The audio effects was the most difficult one, and I'll be honest, the final outcome wasn't the best. I would say it's the weakest, but it was the most effort I've kind of put in. I think because the other programs you have made quite a lot, I had that to fall back on, but these are two brand new programs I've never used before, and I spent a lot of time really understanding them. The final outcomes weren't the best, and they could have been better, but I think the amount of effort and time I've been in was justified, and it really made me better understand the programs. And I'm looking forward, I'm very much looking forward to using um, Audition, the final program, decide on not to spoil the experimentation inside of my um, inside of my film because I think it's really going to help make that booming voice that really gives a presence and really gives real kind of physical embodiment to the voice. Um, so let's kind of get into the overall wrap up. I'll go on to pros, cons, target review, target, and I'll briefly talk about how I do next week. Okay, um, let's get into the main pro this week. I think the, the, the video is very much dug into pros and cons really well beach method. Um, we had the option to do a written or video based one. I decided to personally do a video based one for multiple reasons. On the practical side, I think I work better with video. I think I'm very much better at talking. I'm, I do have um, problems with spelling just because of personal reasons. So spelling's always been an issue for me. So I do try to avoid spelling it whenever I can. And also I think visual a visual medium for a lot of them is much easier to show off what I'm talking about and stuff like that. So um, I think these bits where I'm just kind of breaking it down where I'm kind of really talking about and able to really just, you know, gush about how much I like using the program and stuff like that. And talking about the pros and cons, I really do go into detail and I really do justify my decision. I don't just sit there and say one pro, one con of each and then call it a day. I really delve into these programs and better understand how to do programs work. Why am I using this program? And what are the kind of problems is like that? And most of, most of the videos, I did find that the programs are useful in certain situations. Some situations are not useful. And they just really helped me better understand pro, um, programs and uh, really helped me best choose the best program for each method. On the con, I would say I could have gone um, more into depth and depth with the experimentation and with the methods. I think I could have looked at dealt more multiple different parts. I think the biggest one I could have gone into, and I think I did talk about it in the section was the audio effects. I could have messed around a bit a lot more and kind of showed off different ways to do it and stuff like that in different sense. I think basically what happened was with this was time-wise, um, I was kind of doing it for a crunch of time, just because of time and stuff like that. And to the programs I was using, as I talked about before, were new, so it was kind of difficult for me to use them. But if I was to do it again, I think I'd push more time. I'd push less time for planning because I think planning kind of didn't, didn't need to have that long time. I put more time into experimentation, probably spend the half time experimenting a bit more, so I could have a more solid understanding of addition and plastic, and I think this would help me make a better decision. But overall, I still think that the methods are well researched, and I will still think these are solid. So Target, I think I met Ish the program last week. Target last week, what I got was to not really, uh, to really work out the programs, experiment with different methods. Um, I did look at both programs, I did mess around quite a while, and I really did find a bit understand them. So I said that's a target um, met because I looked at it and I really understood how to do it, and I kind of messed around it. I didn't just lose them for five minutes and call it a day. I really messed around and spent a solid good couple of hours of each of the program better, best understanding how to do the practical technique I'm looking for. So my target for next week, um, next week will be filming week. Um, is to focus on small details, take time, look back on footage and try to get at least half the film done. So basically I want to get my, at least half, so I'd probably say the first three sequences. So next week's going to be interesting. Um, how I'm going to do this is actually very similar to way back in Project 1. Uh, so in Project 1, um, 
I made, where is it? I made the night shift. Um, one of the big things uh, uh, I made for it, and I think it's having the distinction, was a 30 minute documentary in the entire production of it. Um, this, when I was doing the project one, I done my one for Vector Fox text based. So videos could have been video uh, things were a bit more be like, you know, like a bit separate. Now they're video based. I'm basically going to combine the ideas in this documentary into uh, the Vector Fox. So what I will do is each day of filming, I'll film updates while filming stuff like that. Each day of editing, I'll film updates and I'll combine them into reflective logs. So it's a work a bit differently. Next week's reflective log will probably be a bit longer and very sweaty you are. But because I'll be showing filming locations, stuff like that. So um, that has been week eight of my course. I think it was a solid week. Um, I think I really came back from the half term break with a lot more energy and I'm very much excited for the upcoming week. I think my experimentation is solid. I think I put a lot of effort into them. You know, even like small details. Um, one detail I really like about experimentation is that I spent time making these little thumbnails for them. This is small detail, but I think it makes the website look cleaner, it makes the website look nicer. It really helps it. And that's something I learned the half term was making thumbnails for the thing. And that really helps. Um, I like my reflection logs. I like it all organized and it creates a very simple van. So yeah, next week is filming week. Um, the target is to kind of just focus on small details and get this half done. And thank you for watching. That has been week eight, week eight of my course, um, FMP, where I've been looking at experimentation.